Hi everyone, I'm just putting this video together of a screen recording of our Dash Pivot system. But before I get into that, I'd like to briefly talk about SiteMate. The, the Dash Pivot tool I'm about to show you is one tool in the SiteMate family of software tools. They have more software for applications that aid different areas of our industry and are developing more as we speak. The latest addition is the contactless scan and sign-in tool, which is being released now and is an up and does an update to Dash Pivot. The idea being with a SiteMate profile, anybody can sign in to a project without touching anything other than their phone or tablet. Also soon to be released is the contactless site, site induction tool, which is aimed at providing a platform for organisations to be able to send operatives any site induction they wish for the operative to, to complete with confirmation of complete completion, allowing the operative to contactlessly sign onto that project. The beauty of this being that the operative will not be able to sign onto a project if they haven't completed the site induction for that project, all of which is done contactlessly and before they get to site. Both of the tools are brilliant tools um, and just two of many of either already available or coming soon tools. I'll attach a couple of links to the same email as this video. The links will take you to a couple of short videos showcasing the two tools I just spoke about. Eventually, SiteMate's vision is to have a LinkedIn-style SiteMate pro uh, forum um, that everyone will sign into with their SiteMate profile. A SiteMate profile will have all of your construction-related details, a signature, and a QR code, and it's the same SiteMate profile that will be used for all of the SiteMate apps you use. This would lead to the whole construction industry being interconnected at the touch of a button. Really game-changing stuff. Anyway, without further ado, onto our Dash Pivot system. So I'm going to show you um, both the Dash Pivot, sorry, the dashboard on the desktop version and the app version. I'll start with the desktop version. This is the the control panel, if you like. So signing up to Dash Pivot's free. It's uh, the first three projects are free. This enables you to get a full feel of what's on offer or available. Um, after that, the the costs start. At around £20 per user per month. I say around because the cost is actually calculated in, in Australian dollars. It's an Australian company. Um, so the, the, they start at 25 Australian dollars per user per month. But for what's on offer, that cost is absolutely tiny. And without doubt will we'll save you an endless amount more than, than you spend. Um, we, Tetra Mechanical, we're a small company. Obviously, we have to watch all our pennies. Um, and without question, we'll be having every operative that's either within or working with our organisation signed up to our Dash Pivot integrated management system. So here we go. Once you've signed up and created an account, this is what your, your dashboard board will look like. Everyone's, all the dashboards, sorry, all the Dash Pivot dashboards look like this. Obviously, we've got, on your organization's home screen, you have your organization's activity. Obviously, if you've not got any activity, you wouldn't have any here. So to begin with, you would just have uh, the dash, uh, sorry, the Tetrad Mechanical, your organization's name, home button, list button, we won't go into just yet, and a template library, which we'll come to in a moment. Um, so on here, as you can also see on the left hand side, we've got organization members, organization controllers. So to invite or add an organization member or controller, you simply type their email in, um, type their email in here and invite them. All users or all um, operative, all end users that will be using the, the, the system, more than likely probably just the app based or app version of the, the system. Um, all they'll need to have on their phone or tablet is the, the Dash Pivot app downloaded and a create uh, uh, an account created within that. Um, both are free to, to do, um, simple to do, straightforward to do. Once they have the, the Dash Pivot app and an account, all the, the, using the email that obviously you, you use to invite them, once you invite them, they just become part of your team in their app, in their account, all that you deploy to them as part of whichever team it is will will go will will be available in their app. They don't the end user doesn't have to do anything. Um, so to create teams, sorry, to create projects 
once you've you've got your your dashboard up and running to create projects you simply click on the your your organization name in the top left corner um, on the desktop version you can do this on the app version you can't because you can't change any of these details on the app version so to create a project click on the top left corner obviously we've got projects on on our sidebar but a brand new account wouldn't have any projects so where 216 Cambridge Science Park is you would have a green plus sign that says create project so to create a project you just click simply click that uh, a new box will come up um, asking you for project name few details save once uh, sorry you fill in the details and click the create button once you create it it would come here you would see it here underneath your your organization name in your left hand scroll option bar so as you can see we've got a few teams that sorry few projects um, and underneath each project we have a couple of teams underneath the, each project you can have as many teams as you like you can either create them at the time of creating the project or you can just create them simply create them here you just add a team by adding the team name and it will add 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 each team as you create them underneath each project so that's as simple as it is to create each project and create each team within each project project if you imagine for each project, you could have a management team, a plumbing team, a, an aircon team, a ventilation team, a brickwork team, uh, all the different teams that you wanted, all under the one project, each project, sorry, all available to, to add things to or, or look at, create things with, all from your left scroll bar underneath your organization name, then underneath each project name. So to create all of the templates within your organization you can do it all from the the organization's home screen um, by clicking the template library when you have uh, sorry when you, you you just sign up and your your account's brand new you won't have any templates but the templates are so easy to to either build or add it's untrue I'm, I'm not a tech whiz in any way myself but all of these projects uh, sorry templates here you see um, I built myself from scratch uh, simply because it, it's so simple and straightforward and when you, you to add a template you click the, the sorry to click the add template at the top right hand corner and from here you get two options you can either choose from a, a free public template library or create your own the library has about 300 plus i think um, different template versions if you like um, or guides uh, i find it easier to create them all yourself all from scratch um, it's very simple I'll, I'll show you just how it comes up let's put in a few details just to quickly get through this uh, template um, each template you create will either be a time in a timeline version or a workflow version we'll come to that in a moment so next here's here's how to create and it really is a simple drag and drop um, setup all of these are interchangeable um, for example the text you change what's written there you text what's um, change what's required um, it really is it really is simple to build I'll show you the layout of one in a second um, so you can get an idea of, of kind of what I've put on on each of the templates we won't save it for now discard that change Yeah, that's gone from. Uh, so in the template library, once you've, you've created all your templates, well, first of all, in, in the template library, in our template library, you can see that um, we have two types of each form. 
Um, this is because we have a management style of each form and a site style of each form. The management style can be just filled out by anyone, our managers, filled, signed. Um, once it's signed and saved, it enters, enters our system. Um, the site version is exactly the same as the management version, but once it's signed by the operative, it enters the system via a workflow. So it, um, it enters the system and pings a notification to the manager that we've assigned either to that workflow or that project for them to sign off also. Uh, so getting back to how we deploy each of these templates to each of our projects. So once we've created our projects, we've created our teams in, in the manner that I told you previously, we've created all our templates that we want to create. We now want to deploy our templates to our projects or a new project comes and we want to deploy, We after creating the new project, we want to deploy a certain few templates to it whichever templates are relevant to that. To do that, you come into the template library in your organization's home um, and click on the templates that you'd like to deploy. If you see before clicking, those are your options. Once you click, some more options come up. Deploy, undeploy or delete. To deploy, you click on the deploy button and then you, you're, you're given a list of all your projects where you can just click or unclick. Here you can deploy or undeploy any of the templates to any of the projects at any given time, whenever you choose. Um, th this is kind of a matrix that, that shows you if I just wanted the site team these, these templates for the Tetrad site team on a certain project, then it can be just that. This is how you are, are able to deploy and undeploy and, and have all the different teams able to see whatever it is that they need to see, be a, a part of whatever it is they need to be a part of. Um, and I think that's about it on the, the templates. So then if we just look at a team, uh, sorry, a project, click on a management team underneath that project. I've clicked on Goldington Academy. So if you click on each project, uh, to, to click on a project, you click on the project, it brings you to the home screen, similar to your, your organization's home screen, um, just with a home and list. The list, again, we won't go into to add a project controller. Again, you just type in their email and click invite to add, uh, sorry, to look at the team. Um, you actually click on each team. So I've clicked on the Goldington Academy management team to add a team member. I simply click in, uh, put, their, put in their email and click invite. As you can see, we've got four team members on this already. To add a team controller, same again, email, click invite. That's the same for each of the teams. To do the same in the site team, you just click on the left scroll bar, option bar, click on the Tetrad site team, same thing again. We haven't got any team members on that yet. Team controllers, project controllers, to add members, type an email, click invite. Let's go back to the management team. So the Goldington Academy management team, there, the home screen for this, as you can see, home, there's an analytics button as well. We won't get into that. More technical stuff, but more real good good data collection tools. A, a photo section. And a template section. So in the, 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 the desktop version, this is how the templates are laid out. And these are the templates that we've deployed to this team, this project, this team within this project. And as you can see, it's just the management versions of the forms, as this is the management team. So we click out onto the site team. Same again, click onto the templates. 
you can see that we've just got the site versions of the templates. Can you give you a quick idea of how to fill a uh, an entry in? Although I'll show you more on that on the the app version. You simply click on the template. Click in the templates, click on the template. Top right corner always, the green button will always be to add a new entry. So in this case, add a Hotworks permit. Click on that. Then fill in all the boxes as, that's asking for the information, the relevant information. Add any photos, operative signature, get the correct signatures. These um, are always a signature box named titled signature box the person to sign in uh, all signatures are G has a, have a GPS location they're timed and dated and it's all logged within the, the form so once we won't save this one but once you've saved uh, an entry a template entry or, or a form entry you, you end up with a timeline uh, button, so the one that's been created under on May the 4th. So each of those buttons you're able to click on to have a look at the entry, have a look at the, the form itself. But once you've saved it and you've gone out and clicked on each button, you have three other three new options, either to, de to delete the form, send as PDF, or clone. You can clone each form that you build, clone each form that you send. But the, the bit we want to show you at the moment is the send as PDF. So to send as a PDF, send each form that's been created as a PDF. You simply click on the send PDF button, type in the email address, six, um, click send email. It's as simple as that. Um, once you've used email addresses, you can type in the first few letters or in this case it will just come up with a, a scrolled list of of uh, email addresses that I've used previously I don't even need to type them in I just click on the email address send email and it's as simple as that I'll just quickly show you what comes when you send a PDF or what's sent as a PDF so once you've sent that to whoever it is that you send this is what they receive whether it be hot work permit, site diary, request for information, whatever form that you send will always come with your logo, organization name, project name, team name, all the, the template IDs that you've asked for it to be on there and a time and date of when the form was created. All of the info that's put in on, on the um, actual template itself, signatures, the time and date of the signature, and then uh, so a time and date of when this PDF was created and then all of the um, info or pictures or anything that you've attached, everything will come as one document. Every entry will come as one document with every bit of information linked to that entry coming as one PDF document. So very professional looking very um uh, all the information on there each time an individual creates one of them they haven't got to fill out all of this this stuff or create any of these bits they only create or they only fill in the bits that we ask them to fill in um only fill in the information and boxes that we ask them to fill in some boxes come pre-filled uh like this one, the guidance, for example, we have uh, other ones are like on a purchase order where the address is pre-filled, all of that to save time for the guys filling in these these forms on the ground. So I think that's it on the desktop version. So if I come out of this, um, look home. I think that's something on the desktop version. So if I show you the app version, the app version, um, it, every time the app version loads up, it loads up a photo screen of each project. There's, it will just load up the first project on your list 
alphabetically because there's that you can't in the app version you can't click the the organization name there's no way of changing that stuff in the app version so in the app version like i say once you've loaded it up you it will load up each it will load up each um, of your projects but it will it will start on the first project in your list alphabetically um, with the first team on the app version as well it also loads the photos section for that team and or project um, so if every time you click onto a new project it will always be on the photo section for that team or project and or project so to get onto the templates To get onto the templates, we click the template button at the bottom and your templates are listed like this. So although on the desktop version, your templates look like are listed like this. On the app version, the templates are listed like this. So the guys on the ground, they click onto a project, click onto a team of that project or if it's if it's say a carpentry team, they will only have carpent carpentry team underneath the project, so they click on that that team underneath the project, um, and they want to create a purchase order. They click on a purchase, click click on the purchase order template. As you can see here, this is the timeline of of all the temp uh, purchase orders that have been created before. To to create a new purchase order, you'll always have a green circle with a plus sign. That will bring you up new PO. You go through, fill out all the details that's asked for, all the amounts, yes, sign, upload any attachments, then click save in the top right corner. We won't save this one for now. Um, if I show you one that's been created, so this is one that's been created, all the details that's been asked for, what it's for, the amounts, blah, 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 blah signature. All of that. Once we've got all of that, and we've, it's a saved entry, we're able to click the blue circle with the three white circle dots in in the middle, which will bring up the same as on the desktop version. The other three options of delete form, cologne, or send PDF. Same thing again. You can just send, click the send PDF, enter the email address. The email addresses will come up after the first couple of letters. Um, and send top right corner it's as simple as that and it's the same PDF that I showed you that will get sent the PDF in this manner uh, has all the details at the top tells you what it is site diary, purchase order, whatever it is um, and that's what, what will get sent on your behalf whilst at the same time being saved into your your timeline I click back on let's say site diary at the same time it, all entries get logged and saved into your timeline for each project so uh, just a quick rundown I mean there's there's loads more to this it's it's so straightforward it's it's frightening but also the guys at SiteMate are 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 brilliant they're they're on hand to help with any issue query that you may have and steer you in the right direction and once you get a feel it literally took me 10-15 minutes to understand that this this what looks fairly complex is so simple to use so simple to break down and basically build to suit your organization that's what we've done um, and that's what we want everyone else to do because it's it's it really is a, a streamlining tool that that we see as game changing so go and check them out dash pivot um, and sitemate uh, dot com and uh, yeah hit, hit them up and get onto them and get them to get an account just just download your your free account to to check out what's actually available then get onto them they'll they'll dial in and, and give you a rundown of what has, what what is actually available and and what you can actually do with with the software um, and uh, I'd be very surprised if anybody could come back and say that that this is a, a, a worthless tool or or not a very good tool. In fact, it's 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 absolutely amazing. And the more the more people use it, the better it will become for all of us. 
So I'll leave that with you um, and go and check them out. Thanks.